Jesus is incarnate God. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This week, as we enter into the Christmas week, we will take some time just to reflect and think about who Jesus is, the one whose birthday we celebrate and uh, many of us will be attending churches where there will be special services uh, around the, this Christmas season and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ that took place about 2,000 years ago. And it's good to just pause and reflect on who Jesus Christ is, the one we worship, the one we celebrate, the one we honor, the one we acknowledge uh, in this Christmas season. One of the important things, the foremost things that we need to recognize about the Lord Jesus Christ is that He is incarnate God, God who became man. So the Bible tells us that in His uh, incarnation, in essence, He was God, but He laid aside His powers of deity. He emptied Himself of all that made Him God, and then He became a man, God incarnate, but yet confined uh, to uh, uh, what a human body, a physical body could handle. Uh, and he limited himself to that and he walked on the earth as a man. Now think about this. What is that real to you and me? That this eternal God, this infinite God, who was limitless, who was powerful, who created all things, would choose to uh, condense himself into such a manner as that what could be confined and contained in a human body and that he would come into this world. It tells us so many things. It tells us that God really loved us so much. And that's why he took this step. That's why he came in this manner because he loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in Him will not die, but have eternal life. God loved us so much, and that's why He took the step of coming as a man. And it also tells us about God Himself stepping in to be our deliverer, our rescuer. He comes in to set us free from what we could not. And it also points us to this one thing, that in His incarnation, this was God's perfection, meaning you didn't need another three, four, five, six, seven, ten incarnations in order to achieve what was uh, what God was trying to achieve. But this one final, complete, perfect incarnation was sufficient because this was truly God who became man. And in one incarnation, He completed the work. He did what He came to do. He fulfilled it so that there was no need for any prior or any subsequent incarnations. One incarnation, God became man and he completed the work that he came to do. This is Jesus, God incarnate, God who became man. Let's worship him. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge you for who you are, even as we celebrate you, celebrate your birth and, and the life you lived and the re your death and your resurrection. Jesus, we acknowledge you. That you are this eternal God who became man, who dwelt among us. We saw your glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We worship you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.